Hi there, I'm Mr. Ray, and today we're going to do a brief tutorial on Adobe Photoshop for beginners. So firstly, let's have, uh, have you load Photoshop CS6. And you'll come up with a screen that looks like this. This is the interface. This is where we do all of our, uh, all of our changes. Now in order to show you the, uh, the tools on the left hand tool side, we'll have to first open up a window. So to do that, go to File new and right here we have our our properties for our screen right now it's set to centimeters so if I change it to say inches I can change my screen to say 8 by 10 my height will go to 10 and click OK and there you have it an 8 by 10 Okay, so now that we have our screen up and running, uh, first thing we're going to need to do is turn on our transformation controls. So if you haven't already done so, the default tool that you should have is going to be your top, top left one. That's called your move tool. So if you select it, in the top corner, you should have something called the show transforms control. Make sure it's checked on. What this will do is this will allow us to move anything on our layer as long as it is unlocked. Now, if we go down to our layers palette, you'll notice that it is locked. Now, that's perfectly fine. We can draw anything we want on it. We just won't be able to touch any of the white screen that's already there. So, if we click this lock and we drag it down, now what we can do is we can actually see that our transformation controls are available to us. And I can move my screen anywhere I want. This is very important when we start dealing with layers. So, moving on to the next tool. We have our marquee tools. Now these marquee tools are very important because it has a triangle in the bottom right hand corner. That means if you click and hold it, you will have other options available to you. The rectangle marquee and the elliptical marquee are probably going to be the most important marquees. The other ones I won't get into today because they're a bit more complicated. So the rectangle marquee tool, if we say make a rectangle, what the marquee tool does, it is allows us to limit what we're doing so if I'm drawing with my paintbrush right here I won't be able to draw anywhere as long as I have something selected but as you notice inside my marquee is allowed okay there we go so it allows us to uh, essentially keep ourselves within the lines that we create for ourselves uh, if you click and hold it you'll be able to change to an elliptical marquee tool and to deselect this, you can either go Control D, or you can just activate your next tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer in your uh, Layers tab on the right-hand side. It'll be the little button that looks like a page with a corner being peeled back. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And as you can see, I have another layer right on top of Layer 0. So the elliptical tool, I'm going to select it, and this time I'm going to use my fill, which is hiding beneath the gradient, paint bucket tool. Okay, and I'm going to fill it with, say, yellow, and as you can see, it's filling up completely. So if I go Control D, and I wanted to, say, move it, what I could do is, as long as my layer is selected, I can move it around. That's what the uh, show transform controls allow you to do. Okay. Now the next tool that I want to show you are the lasso tools. If you click and hold the lasso tools, you will find that there are three sets of lassos. There's a regular, the polygonal, and the magnetic. So to show you the effects of this tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another image for you. So if you're following along, go ahead and open up another image. Okay, I'm going to use an eagle. Okay, now the regular lasso tool allows me to take any particular shape that I can draw with my freehand. So say I want uh, his beak. Okay, I can just draw around his beak and I can clean it up later. Okay, and then I can click on this guy, my move tool, and ta-da, I have him moved. Okay, I can move them anywhere I want. 
uh, especially other layers, that's very useful. So I'm going to do Control Z and then Control D, and I'm going to show you the next tool, the polygonal lasso tool. Allows you to make straight lines. So if you have a very uh, shapely image, there you go, straight lines, same thing. Works out very well for uh, for those kind of straight edges. The last one is the magnetic lasso tool. Now the magnetic lasso tool is uh, very similar, however, it works off of lines and what the computer can distinguish as lines. So you can actually uh, help it out in that sense. So Control D. I'm gonna still look at his beat. So I'm take my starting point up here, and if I just drag it along, automatically it'll pick up the difference in pixels. And because it's a curled spot there, I'm just gonna do a one click. Tell the computer, okay, that's where I want to have an anchor point. Anchor point. And that way you're kind of helping it along just in case it deviates, because sometimes it will deviate. Just keep going. Okay, now I'll have a little bit of cleanup to do with this one. But essentially, that's a lot better cleanup than my first guy. Not too bad. Okay. Control Z. Oh, and by the way, in the event you have multiple steps that you want to take care of, go to your window, select history, okay, and your history palette comes up. What I like to do is I like to click on it, my window at the very top, and dock it. And I can choose up here, I can choose in here, or down here. And all that does, it, is, it allows me to do a shortcut to it. So right now I was on adjustments, if I click on history, there I just open my, uh, my file, if I wanted to, I could select magnetic lasso, bring it down to the garbage. The regular lasso, down to the garbage. And it works essentially like a back button, except for multiple pieces. And as you go back step by step, you can see that on the screen, the viewer window, those particular steps come up as uh, the last step that I've actually done. Okay, moving on. So the next tool I want to show you is one to remove background, or foreground for that matter, it's up to you. It is the selective selection tool. If I click on it, because it has a little arrow in there, you'll notice that it also has the magic wand tool. So I'm going to, for the first moment, show you the quick selection tool. And with the quick selection tool, it, is, it selects lines. So if I say select this uh, brown and try to take out some background, it's saying that, okay, the first click was singular, the second click, all of this other stuff is roughly the same. If I keep on clicking, oh, it brought out some of the beak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up a hair, press delete, but you notice that it doesn't do anything. Why? Because my layer is locked. So I'm going to unlock my layer. Now when I press delete, I have a checkerboard. What the checkerboard does, it is allows me to see transparently through the image, or at least the background, so I can superimpose it onto another layer without having the brown show through. So I'm gonna select and just slowly go around just to make sure that I don't get, oh, I got some of his beak. Control D, same thing, Control D. Now if you continually get the same selection over and over again, like I was getting his beak right here, what you could do is, up in the top uh, properties panel, you can either add to selection or subtract from selection. So if I click subtract, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the beak, and that'll basically tell the computer that, okay, there's a selection here that we do not want. So I'm going to do add selection now and take some of this brown. There we go. Go back to my selection tool. Now because brown and brown match up, if I click on this side, Hold down control, or no, hold down shift. There we go. Oh, but I notice I have some of his back here as well. So I'm going to click on uh, subtract. And I'm just going to, oh, there we go. That's, that's decent enough. Oh, I have some over here. There we go. It takes a little bit of time to uh, adjust it, but once you get it going, it's, it's pretty slick. And delete. 
Now who have here I have the outline of my bird. Control D to deselect. Now if you'll notice very carefully, you'll see that there are lines in between uh, in between my selection. I won't do much with his hair because that's going to be a, a fairly lengthy process. But what I could do is I could add another layer on top of him. Okay, here it comes. I'm going to fill it with a really bright color like say red. My fill tool is in my gradient. I've already pre-selected it, so I'm going to fill. And I'm going to change orders of it by clicking on my layer and dragging it down. What that allows me to do is it allows me to see the eagle on top. Now with that layer selected, or pardon me, the eagle layer selected, I can just go to my eraser and just clean up the little bits that I've missed. And there we go. A little too far. Start from his beak and work out. Okay, so that's how you'd work the selection tool. The other tool that's within this quick selection tool is the magic wand tool. The magic wand, unlike this quick selection tool, will focus off of colors. Quick selection is for lines, magic wand is for colors. So if I had different contrasts, I could say selectively click out some of his dark feathers. It'll still work to do the, essentially the same thing. I would just have to play with my tolerance a little bit. Right now it's set to 32, so if I bring it up, it'll suck up a bit more of the black. Say if I brought to 60%. There you go. Basically suck out, sucked out all the black. And if I bring it down to say 10%, and I do it again, it'll only take limited colors of black because it's only taking out essentially a 10% tolerance plus or minus of the color that's currently selected. Okay, so control D to deselect. Next we have the crop. If you click and drag, we have the crop, perspective crop, slice tool, and slice select tool. The slice tools are particularly for, for doing uh, lines with web page design, uh, but we're not going to touch those. So let's just use the crop tool. And just like any other crop tool, you can selectively crop what you want. And when you're done, you press enter. With the uh, perspective crop tool, crop the image? No, don't crop. Perspe per perspective crop tool is actually quite neat. What that allows you to do, it allows you to crop perspectively and angle out you know, certain things, if you wanted to, that is. Takes a little bit of playing around. You really have to be uh, looking for something quite particular to use this tool. But anyways, that's how you do it. And if you want to keep it, press enter, and there you go, you've cropped your, uh, your selection. Now, I don't particularly like this, so I'm going to go back into my uh, history palette click and drag it and bring it out there we go okay next we'll have a look at the eyedropper tool and that's exactly what this guy is now there are multiple tools within the eyedropper tool if you click and hold but for the moment I'm only going to touch on the eyedropper tool itself now what the eyedropper tool does is it's actually pretty cool say you want to match this yellow exactly you just click on it and then look in your color swatch and there it is say so I wanted his uh, the eye to be matched well what you can do is control plus as long as you have nothing selected and what that'll do is that'll zoom you in and if I select the green and then green is now magically in my color palette the next tool is this little banded guy now in the banded guy we have multiple tools but the favorite one is the healing brush tool. The healing brush tool is actually uh, done manually. The spot healing brush tool is done automatically. I haven't played with that one too much. So let's do the uh, healing brush tool and you can play around with however you like later. Okay, now the healing brush tool is actually very neat. If you have something you want to match with another call that you already have pre-existing, all you have to do is press Alt. And you get this little target thing on your... Uh, the, the crosshairs on your cursor. So right now it's set to uh, feathers, but say I want to take out this uh, line ridge here. I press Alt, select my yellow right here, and now I can replace it with my yellow. Match it up to the corner, 
Oh, I have a different color there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it. Now this takes a little bit of uh, creative license because every time you select Alt, if you have a small enough area, you will have to replace it with something else. So right now I just extended his beat color. And other than this little line at the top or the, the, the coloring at the top, you can't really tell too much. If I want to say take out this nostril hole, I would do the same thing. Alt. And try to match the grain of his beak. That's basically all I'm doing. And bit by bit, there you go. It's not too bad. Just to be a little crazy. If I wanted to say uh, add fur to his beak, I would do something very similar. Take a close cross section, and every time you click, it takes the original pattern. So if I say took his eyeball, and I put an eyeball right here, the more I draw, the more it'll pick up. And there you go. So I'm going to undo that one because that was just for uh, for giggles. Let's undo a bit more because I have fur on his beak. And I think we'll stop about there just because got to move on. This next guy I won't do uh, very much on. It's the brush tool. Brush tool does very much or does quite a bit actually. You have your hardness set to 100 and you have your size. So you can change your size up to whatever size you want. You can actually put in numeric figures if you want to go higher than that, like say a thousand. But then it's bigger than your actual screen. So let's bring it down to something reasonable, like say 30. And the hardness is actually very neat. Okay, if I'm drawing with, I'm sure I'll use that color. I'll go high. Okay. Now if I change my hardness down to say, uh, 12 we'll say and I do it again kind of looks like it's spray paint because what it's doing is it's feathering out the outside edges and that's called hardness so as long as your hardness is set high you'll have crisp lines if it's not set high you'll have very soft lines that's good for blending uh, blending colors into I don't know say creases of a pants or you know however else you want to do it the pencil still hasn't changed for most other graphics program it only does one pixel at a time. So if you do uh, diagonals, you'll see how it, it's hard to get straight because it's only doing one pixel at a time. So take those guys out. And bada bing. Okay. The stamp tool or the clone stamp tool, very similar to what we just did with the uh, healing brush. Okay. But I have to hold Alt to select my pattern again and then it'll. There you go, paint it up again. A little quicker to do, but again, same process. And the pattern stamp is very much like the paintbrush in that you have your pattern up here. And you can fill that in all you want. Okay, so I'm gonna control Z, undo those guys, trash my clone stamp tool and we'll move on. Next on the tools menu we have this artistic brush tool. Uh, right now it's causing me some grief so I'm not going to touch that right now. And we'll skip over to the uh, eraser. The standard tool would be the straight eraser and that just as you would expect erases. If I go to the eagle layer I can start erasing. Voila. I'm going to undo that just by clicking on it, and they're going to stay in my history as long as I don't drag them into the garbage. Uh, the other eraser tools, background eraser tool and magic eraser tool. Uh, the background eraser tool will do exactly what the eraser tool does, except through multiple layers, it'll take up the background. But because we only have the one layer, it doesn't really matter. The magic eraser tool, very much like the magic wand, Oh, I'm on layer one. Let me go down to my eagle. 
But what it'll do is it'll try to pick up the same pattern and pull it out on its own. Right now the uh, tolerance is too high. Have to 32. So if I dial it back a little bit. Oops, wrong one. Let me go back into my eagle. I'll bring it down to say 20. Make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay, so it still there's a little bit of the uh, eagle's neck and whatnot. But to, uh, to fix that, what I could do is I could just draw a selection so that it doesn't touch it. Or I could just take my eraser tool, erase around it manually so it doesn't pull out that extra black-brown color. Alright, moving on. We have the paint bucket tool, which does exactly what you think it does. It fills with paint bucket. And the gradient tool. Now gradient, if I take off my uh, eagle head, I can click and drag in whatever want direction that I want. And it will do exactly that, except it will only do what I want it to do. So I could have a, a split, diagonal, etc. And it would work. And of course, if you go up here into your properties bar, you have the circular, you have the diagonal, you have the vertical bars, and you have this guy. This guy looks a little funky. Okay. You guys get the idea. Kind of nice for a little uh, spotted background for shading. I think we'll stop right there. I need another picture for this blur tool. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we are again. I now have a new picture. Uh, the blur tool. Okay, so here over here it looks like a little eye drop. And as you can see, yes, we have a drop down menu, so we have two other tools associated with it. If you click and hold, we have the sharpen tool and the smudge tool. So the blur tool. If you just click, you won't see anything. What you have to do is click and hold or click and drag. So if I go over her eye and I click and I drag, it'll slowly blur her out. Now say I want to keep this little girl's face, what I could do is I could up my brush, something nice and big, and I'll just blur everything else out. When you click and drag, you do the same stroke, so that way it stays as one piece in your history. This is actually a very cool effect to do. If you're doing uh, wedding pictures or uh, romantic pictures, you just create yourself a nice little uh, marquee over what you want to protect and blur out the rest. And you guys remember how to do that? Select inverse. So now if I take my blur tool and I go over, it won't touch your head. And I can guarantee myself that her face will be protected. Ta-da! Okay, Control D, deselect. And there you have it. We've blurred out the picture, but we've kept her face. Okay, so I'm going to undo that and go back up. There we go. Okay, now as I mentioned before, you do have your property panel up top. So if you want, you can change the hardness, so you can tell it how much to feather and how much to blur. You could also change your brush strokes, just like with the uh, the paintbrush or uh, other similar tools. The next one we have is the sharpen tool. Now the sharpen tool is actually a layered effect, um, but because it's used quite often, it's um, you know smaller details. Essentially, what it'll do is it'll bring up the contrast and change your uh, your levels. Um, the layman's way of explaining that is color correction and contrast. So if I use a small brush, you won't be able to see it very well. But essentially the same thing, you've got to click and hold. But if I use a larger brush, I'll also use this little girl as well as a demonstration. And so you just continually clicked and held. And you sharpen and sharpen and sharpen. Eventually you would see that it has some sort of discoloring. I'm actually sharpening her. And by sharpening, I'm sharpening out the colors. So you want to be very careful with that tool because it can uh, change <laughs> what you're looking for. But it is very good to use if you have something that's a little bit too hard to see. You can contrast out the colors and change its levels so that you have something nice and visible. The last one, 
is a smudge tool and yeah you get you got blah, sorry you guessed it it'll smudge this is something I can uh, demonstrate we'll use a uh, wider brush so 47 sure this time we'll go with the guy and I'll smudge out his eyes and I don't know bring out his nose in addition to distorting his face we actually smudge it so it's blending the colors together there is an effect called liquify that allows us to do this with a, a very clear uh, picture but that comes later so as you can see I can smudge quite a bit of her and if you smudge enough you can just swirl around pixels and let's do mom as well there we go now they're faceless okay Moving on. Okay, the next tool we want to look at. Let me just take off his uh, smudge. The next we want to look at is this uh, magnifier glass here. Click and hold. You have the dodge tool. You have the burn tool, and you have the sponge tool. The dodge tool we won't look at too much, but the burn tool and the sponge tool are actually kind of neat. Now the burn tool will do exactly that, it'll burn. So what that means is it'll actually darken whatever is previously there and add a couple shades to it, depending on you know how much you wanna add to it. So if I burn this guy, kinda makes him look like he's got a, a deep tan. And depending on how much I go, I could really toast him up. There you go, so it looks like he has a tan. If I go for the sponge tool, it'll do the exact opposite. It'll actually sponge away color. Almost like it's absorbing it. And if you sponge enough, it will actually make it into a black and white picture. And of course, it's the reverse effect of the burn tool. There we go. So I'm sponging out some of the uh, color saturation. And I'm essentially desaturizing it. Ta-da! Okay. Bad example. But you guys get the idea. It sucks away color and the burn tool adds color okay so the next tool we're gonna look at is the, um, the pen tool now the pen tool is actually for making paths now because paths are so important um, they're actually very complicated to do so what they do, it does is you'll uh, create shapes contours essentially and you're allowed to modify them after they've already been created so you don't have to remake them all the time uh, if you've ever tried playing with it, it goes those squiggly lines. And now wherever I put my pen, that's where the next point's going to go to. But it'll also curl up to that point from the halfway point. Now I can make another one. Then if I went, say, over here, it would loop around again. But now my halfway point's there, so if I go way up here, there you go. Made it bigger. Um, it's kind of important to know, but it's a little bit complicated to use because you have to have a really good hand. Uh, so for the moment, we won't actually worry about that. Uh, so the free floating point, I could actually take my point and relocate it. And everything else will go proportionally along with it. Now, because I didn't make an actual shape here, there's no real big deal. But if you're making a heart from scratch, this is the tool you would use. And you'd probably just use a symmetry and uh, duplicate the points on the other end. So let's uh, skip that because it's actually quite complicated to use and I haven't mastered it myself. So if we go back a little bit, there we go. Um, the next tool is the text tool. So right now the default is the horizontal text tool. Everyone knows how to make horizontal text. I can go, hello Fairview. Now of course because I'm in between layers, it's hard to see, especially because it's so small. So 
So once I change my tools, if I poke this guy out, there you go, hello Fairview, right there. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to poke off my, uh, not poke off, sorry, I'm going to turn off the visibility, and I'm going to add another layer. Okay, as long as this layer is on top of a colored layer, it will work. So we have our horizontal text, we have our vertical text, same thing except horizontal, or vertical, sorry. And now we have the horizontal type mask tool and the vertical type mask tool. What a mask does is it, allow, it allows selective um, layers to come through whatever the mask is. In this case, it'll be text. Now masks are a whole thing on their own, but we'll come to that a little later if we have time. So the horizontal type mask tool, if we select it and we type, uh, we'll say, put myself a text box and I'll go fair view. Fair view, there we go. Now it's kind of small, so it's hard to see. So what I'll do is I'll amp it up. I'll bring it to say, uh, 72 is my max. So I'll digitally input say 100. There we go. There's Fairview right there. And the font is Sakal Majala, whatever that is. I'm going to bring it up to something a bit more um, obvious for the effect we're trying to do. Show card ga gothic is actually kind of nice. Um, and let's bring it from strong to, I don't know, sharp we'll say. So my text box is actually too small. So I'm going to enlarge it best I can. There we go, Fairview. I'll just select it because it's like the area is empty. Absolutely right. Now what it is, it took my text and converted it into a shape. Now this shape is actually going to be a mask. The mask is down on my layer 2. But notice layer 2 has absolutely nothing on it. Well, if I take my figure, you know, it could not move because it's empty. Yes, it is empty. If I move it to say over here and drop it. Then I select my layer zero, which is my bird layer, my eagle layer. Now I have this whole mask or this whole uh, shape on my eagle layer. So what I can do is I can do control C or control X and all that will do is copy or cut depending on my choice. I'm going to choose to copy. I'm going to click on my layer two and I'm going to paste it. And because the, the text is filled completely into the text exactly, once I turn off my eagle visibility layer, ta-da, I have an eagle poking through in text. Kind of neat. Okay, the next tool is this arrow tool right here. It actually coincides with this pen tool for paths, but it allows you to select a certain points on the path. Now, I haven't mastered it myself, so I don't actually want to go into it right now. Um, so let's skip it. This next guy is a very simple and familiar one. It's a rectangle tool, shape tool. If you click and hold, you see that you have multiple tools. So say I choose the polygon tool. Well, I can start creating my polygons just like I always could. If you notice at the top, you have a choice of fill color. Okay, you have your strokes. That's how thick your line is and how, what color the line is. So I can make my line blue, uh, make it say, I don't know, there we go. <laughs> pretty big, pretty big uh, stroke. Stroke is just another word for outline. So I'll just bring that back down. There we go. And if you want to, you could bring it down to nothing. Uh, size has five. Now, if you want to, you could adjust that to say, I don't know, nine, for instance. And now you'd have a nine sided shape polygon. Okay. Um, similarly, if you wanted to, you have different shapes you can use. Like say this guy, for example, the custom shape tool. Less than custom, but you can still get what you want out of it. Uh, your shapes are up here in the top right of the properties panel. So right now it's set to, what is it set to? I can't actually tell, let's try it. Okay, so it's set to a blob. If we change it to say the fleur de lis, there we go, we have a nice fleur de lis. Probably change it so it's a nice royal blue and match the outline. Okay, well, close enough. You guys get the idea. 
uh, create custom shape. I'll hit cancel. I don't want to create custom shape right now. Um, but yeah, you have the rounded rectangle tool. Same thing, just does rounded edges to your rectangles. So you don't have to cut them off. Remember when you were kids, you'd always do that? Yeah, I did that too. The ellipse tool, that's for making circles. Uh, the line tool, and we already explored the polygon tool. And everyone knows about the rectangle tool. Uh, this hand right here is a zoom tool or a slide tool. You could also choose to rotate something. But in case you guys are unfamiliar with the uh, rotate, say I choose... Um, Let's go to my eagle, actually. If I only want my eagle, what I can do is I can pop out the visibility. Oh, and by the way, when creating shapes, because you're using uh, the tool, it'll automatically create new individual layers for each shape. So you can easily just take them off if you wanted to. So I'll just poke the eyes out, and that means I'm taking off the visibility. There we go. So I'm back to my fair view. You know what, it might actually be easier if we work with our eagle. So let's poke off the uh, fair view. Well, okay, I'll do it for you. Poke out its eye, bring back the eagle. And what we're gonna do is we're going to select our eagle. Come on. There we go, make sure it's selected. And now that we have our uh, little anchor points, we can uh, rotate our whole canvas. There we go. Why do you wanna do that? anyone's guess but you're welcome to do that do so for perspective if you want now if you want to rotate your image within the canvas what you could do is if you change tools and you have your show transform controls on you will see the uh, transformation controls the anchor points if you just hover over one of the anchor points you will see a double-edged curved arrow and what that allow you to do is it allow you to rotate within the canvas so say I want my eagle there I could release him and then when I exported my frame, I would have one, two, three, four triangles cut off. Now it's up to you to do that, but then you, if you're doing that, you'll probably crop out something else regardless, just for the angle. So there we have it. We have a brief overview of the Photoshop tools. Um, there is only the colors, which you guys already know about. You double click, oh, control D to deselect. Enter to lock it in place, control D. Okay, you have your color palette here double select or double click and here you have your masks time permitting perhaps another lesson we will look at that later but for now my name is Mr. Arsenal hopefully you guys have learned a lot practice makes perfect keep using your tools that's the best way to learn